when I pick top and I rotate it if needed, I pick top and I see N up there, I'm going to make sure WCS is set right there before I start checking your drawing at all. So I'll spin it around. If you left it off WCS, maybe you spun it around into that other coordinate system, which is called a UCS, user coordinate system. Maybe you spun it around. Well, if it's just set to UCS, that's not a five point error. I'll click that and pull it down and select WCS and it's probably, I think it's a couple points normal and something like that. But if it's not set to that and when I set it to WCS, all of a sudden your drawing isn't correct. It's not oriented to zero, zero. It's not rotated the correct direction. It's not spun around the correct direction. That's what I will be grading how it is in WCS because when it's dumped into these virtual models like this, they're all based on WCS, the World Coordinate System, which is a set zero, zero in AutoCAD, and it will also be a point on those 3D models. So when the pipers, when the vessel people, the pump people, the civil, the structural, all these different people get it, somewhere on those drawings, they're gonna say, here's a coordinate point that you will work off of. Is it zero, zero, zero sometimes? When I'm up at uh, DD6 working during the day, so at DD6, we work off of what's called state plane. State plane is not based on a point in the, um, on the earth that's called zero, zero. It's not based necessarily on latitude and longitude. It's based on a point that is somewhere around Texas. From what I can tell, it's either out in the Gulf of Mexico or it's somewhere around Galveston. But when I go to draw up at DD6, zero, zero on my drawings up there, when you get into later classes, um, third or fourth semester in civil, I open up some of my civil drawings from DD6. Zero, zero is way down there. So is there actually a monument down there that says zero, zero? I don't know. But it allows us here in Jefferson County and someone else over in Tyler County, Hardin County, Orange County, all these different counties to have a common point all the way to Houston, to have a common geographic point in the world that they can link up to satellites and say, this is where we're at. Like I said, around here, um, I think when I when I go and I draw in Jefferson County based on, like I said, a state plane coordinate of zero, 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 way down somewhere out towards the Gulf, when I go and draw up there and I click on an object, my coordinates that I see are north, I think 13 million, 900 something thousand feet to the north of zero, zero. So wherever 13, 000, 13 million feet south of us is, that's a horizontal line that cuts through there, just like a grid system. Uh, but like I said, where we're at in Jefferson County, zero, zero's right here, up here where we're at. When I looked at my ditches, we're in the north direction, 13 million, 900 something thousand. In the east direction, there's only 100,000 digits or something, but yeah. So when you're drawing 3D like this, unless you get into that civil world, drawing 3D, you will be basing every drawing in some form or fashion on zero, zero, zero. So make sure you adhere to that. Make sure when you get through with your drawing, it says WCS up there before you send it to me. And make sure that your drawing is oriented correctly once you set that to WCS. So if you have to, you know, lots of times people get that oh crap moment. You know, they had spun their object around, they brought their right hand rule to them in a different position. So now instead of a WCS, it was called Untitled. It was a user coordinate system, not a world coordinate system. So they start drawing. Everything looks great. There's their little XYZ icon. They type in zero, 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 it goes right to it. Everything's great. They go set that back to WCS before they turn it in. Uh-oh. Now they've got to spin their object around. They've got to move their object over to the true world coordinate system, zero, zero, zero. So make sure before you start and when you finish, that says WCS up there. 
So on this little isometric sketch, what I did with these little drawings, I didn't recreate the drawings. So like I said, get your sketch out from a couple weeks ago or three weeks ago, however long it was when I gave those out. Remember all that stuff needs to go in your notebook at the end of the semester. Uh, so what I did was just brought in some key information, some key coordinates. <clears throat> One thing that I do when I'm drawing in 3D is I make sure that my F12, my dynamic input is turned off. I do a lot of things with coordinate inputs, especially in the piping that I do. So um, I type in, you know, just like we used to type in, thank you, uh, just like we used to type in X comma Y, now I'm gonna be typing in a lot of stuff X comma Y comma Z. So what I did right here on the isometric, I showed you where zero zero is gonna be. It's gonna be on this front bottom corner right here. That's where our zero zero is. And then I said, okay, there's my north direction. So in the schematic of what y'all are working on in 2D, we know that zero degrees is to the right, 180 is to the left, AutoCAD counts in a counterclockwise direction. We know X is to the right, negative X is to the left. We know vertically up is 90 degrees, down is 270 degrees. Up is also the Y, positive Y direction. Down is the negative Y direction. Well, that same schematic that we've been working off of can also be matched to here. So that view cube that we have up here, when we draw to the right and AutoCAD's language has been zero degrees, well, it can also be east. AutoCAD will understand either one of those formats. If I go in and turn off my grid, if I go L and spacebar and pick a point, and AutoCAD says specify next point, I type in the formula at two is less than zero. AutoCAD drew a line two inches to the right. If I go into my line, line command and I type, pick a point, type in the formula at two comma zero, AutoCAD drew a line straight to the right. So that's two methods that we've talked about our formulas to draw. I mean our formula, but um, two formulas. I can also go in and pick that and type in at two is less than, is less than, AutoCAD knows to the right is east. I can type in E and hit enter, and AutoCAD also drew a line straight to the right two inches. So whether we utilized or used those formulas, AutoCAD has known that information all along. That view cube has been up there all along. We just haven't been thinking about it because we haven't been doing 3D. But to correlate it with our X and Y direction, you can see we're north, south, east, and west also match up to our X and Y up and down is our Z direction. So we can't see it in 2D, but now that we're working in 3D, what I did was I kind of rolled it up, kind of like this view right here, what we talked about and we call isometric. You know that north is 30, north-south plane, north is 30 degrees up and to the right. On our east-west plane, east is 30 degrees down on the right. Up and down is still up and down. So now that we've matched up north-south, east and west, we can show this schematic and we can show our north, south, east, and west. We can show our same 0, 90, 180, and 270 in an isometric world. We can also show our Z and negative Z, which is our up and down in our isometric world. So that's a lot of stuff to twist over in your head. And the more drafting experience, the more you see and you visualize these objects, um, it helps you to tie all that together. But understand that when you're drawing with this tool, it's kind of like using a hammer. The tool is designed to do this. In a perfect world, a, a drafter would all day pick a point, show a direction, type in a distance, and hit enter. Or pick a point, go over here and pick another end point or midpoint. Stuff like that would be nice. But we have those formulas in there. We know about those formulas. Now we're going to learn about 3D and how we can still use those formulas at x comma y. That's just one character away from being X, Y, Z. We can type in an X comma Y comma Z point in a 3D world. AutoCAD can draw based on that. So in this little isometric sketch, we've got zero, zero in this corner. North is in that direction. So that means our Y, when we're normally drawing, that means that direction is gonna be there. Just like our view cube, north is straight up. Y is north, so Y is gonna be in that direction. So keep things like that in mind. 
see that sketch, but understand some of that interpretation between, you know, line, north, and 90 degrees. They're all the same direction in AutoCAD's language. So if I were to go from this point in the y direction to that corner over there, this corner is zero comma zero comma zero, that corner over there, zero comma 7.5, because that part is seven and a half inches long, comma zero, because they're still on the bottom. They're still on the bottom of this. We haven't gone up yet. This corner back in this direction, if this is zero, zero, that direction west in real world directions, west based on north is that way, west is this way. So if I'm going in that direction, I'm going in the negative x direction. So that corner right there is negative four, comma zero. I didn't go anywhere in the y direction, comma zero. I didn't go anywhere in the up down direction. So having your F12 turned off will allow you to input points like this. If you have your F12 turned on, remember anytime you pick a point, in AutoCAD says specify the next point. If you type in coordinates with F12 turns, turned on, it says, well, you're at that point. Let me go this distance. So if I were to draw this line from this corner to here, and then I want to draw that line on that back side right there. Or actually, if I want to draw this line from here to here, if I go from here to here and then want to draw across that back side over there, that back corner point would be in the X direction. In uh, this direction, we're going to the left, so it would be negative 4, comma, in the Y direction, it would be 7.5. In the Z direction, it's still on the bottom back there, so it's still 0. So to type that point in, if I go into AutoCAD and AutoCAD says specify first point, zero comma zero comma zero. AutoCAD says specify next point, zero comma 7.5 comma zero. AutoCAD says specify the next point. If we type in negative four comma 7.5 comma zero, AutoCAD's gonna say, well, you've got F12 turned on, which is dynamic input, which says that I'm at that point go to the left four, so it's gonna go over four inches in that direction where it needs, to. well actually, it's right here, so it's, no worry. It's gonna go over four in that direction, then it's gonna go in the Y direction, seven and a half, and it's gonna pick a point way out there because it says you're at this point, go here. But we don't wanna do that. We wanna to go to absolute, based on this point being zero, zero, absolute coordinate, negative four, 7.5. So learn to think in that 3D world and learn to use your coordinates like that, your X, Y, and Z coordinate, because it does um, make some, some drawings a lot easier. All right, so like I said, there's multiple ways to draw these shapes. If you had drafters lined up with computers that matched, more than likely if they're doing a 3D drawing, just about every one is gonna go about it a little bit different. Maybe they do a step different than another one. Maybe they draw it using totally different shapes. So I'm gonna show y'all some of these shapes. And like I said, like normal, if y'all want to record, you can. Um, I know it's a lot, especially some of y'all that have zero 3D knowledge. Um, if you have no knowledge or you know past experience working in 3D, it may be kind of hard for you starting out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna show you some of the different methods that we could use to draw these shapes, uh, to draw this block first. One of the methods that we could do, so we know that zero, zero is gonna be on that front bottom corner. And if anybody has 3D history and 3D experience, if you, you're you good with this, this are your, these are your assignments. There's how you name, I didn't tell y'all that. Whenever you email it to me, you will be emailing me the electronic files for your 3D projects. So you're gonna send me the electronic AutoCAD drawing file. Make sure that you erase any 2D items. So if you do some 2D sketching to, to be able to create your shapes, make sure you go through and erase those 2D profiles. Don't just turn the layer off, erase them. Um, make sure you do that, but your file name. So whenever you email me that DWG file, your file name is gonna be your last name and then the project. Because I check these electronically. I take mine and I copy from mine and paste it into your drawing that you emailed me. 
and then I go through and look for look for differences or look for discrepancies. So whenever you send it to me, lots of times I might get a bunch of them and say, well, look, I'm just going to go do this at the house. I'm going to go do this in my office. I'm going to check these in my office. So I will copy them to a thumb drive or download them to a thumb drive to go to another computer to do it without email, without opening up my email. So what that does is it does not get, um, if I stick them all in one folder, if you don't stick your last name on there, maybe I can open it up and see whose it is. But if you don't stick your last name on the file name, now I got a bunch of them I'm trying to stick in one folder called block. And you can only stick one file, file of each format with that name. So now I'm having to rename them. So what I do is I get you to send it to me in the format, the file name, the DWG file. So when you first open up that blank drawing and you say, this is the project that I'm working on, you do your save as, go ahead and call it that, your last name and then the name of the project. There is no 2D that we're going to be doing on this for a while. It's just going to be the 3D project of it. So that's the file name. So like I said, if you're good with 3D, if you've been drawing, some of you may have 3D experience, uh, that's going to be your next assignment as those two drawings do next week, 30 minutes into class. Uh, 3D, get your picture of what's on the board and head out if you want to. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing these. So I've opened up my master drawing. I've got a bunch of layers that I've added in. I've added in some 3D layers also. So I'm going to switch to one of my 3D layers. I'm going to do my save as, control shift S. I'm going to go to my folder. in your file name when you send it to me as drafters anytime we submit something drawing wise. Now you don't have to put any caps, never mind. You can do your file name now. All right, so zero, zero, that point right there, I'm gonna hold my shift key down to my mouse wheel and roll it up a little bit. That point right there, zero comma, zero comma, zero, needs to be the front right corner in that view right there. So what I'm gonna do is one of the ways that I can draw this, I'm gonna go into my block command a box command. When AutoCAD says specify starting point, I'm going to type in 0, 0, 0 and enter. AutoCAD says specify other corner. That's what we just calculated. We found out that that other corner was located at absolute coordinate negative 4, 7.5, 0. So with F12 turned off, AutoCAD says specify other corner, negative 4, comma 7.5 comma 0 and enter. AutoCAD found that point. AutoCAD is asking me for a height. What I'm drawing right now is this small box down here on the bottom. It goes all the way around that thing. On our drawing, we see that that small box is one inch tall. So when AutoCAD says specify height, I type in one and enter. There's that bottom box. Next thing I'm going to do is start drawing these boxes that stick up out here in the center. So what I did was, I'm going to draw those little boxes that stick up, but I'm going to draw them as complete boxes like that. I'm going to draw a bunch of boxes that stick up out there. And then I'm just going to join all this together later on. So I went through and I found some coordinate points down here on the bottom. So I go back into my box command. AutoCAD says specify starting point. <coughs> I've located in XYZ format some of these points. So this corner right here is one and three quarter in the Y direction. So AutoCAD says first corner, zero comma 1.75. You don't always have to put in the Z. It's understood to be zero if you don't put it in. <coughs> so I type that in with no at symbol. So that is world coordinates, absolute coordinate system. <coughs> so it started that box right there, so I just gave it the coordinates for that corner right there. AutoCAD says specify other corners. So remember, on the box, what we're illustrating is that base, that square or rectangular shape. So when AutoCAD says specify other corner, I look at my drawing and I find out that that box is one foot wide in this direction. Over here in this view, it shows me it's one foot wide in that direction. So when AutoCAD says specify other corner, I'm going to type in the at symbol. 
which tells AutoCAD you're at that point that I just picked. The point you're looking for is to the left one inch, so it's negative one, and then it's vertically in the Y direction, positive Y. So I type in the formula at negative one comma one, and AutoCAD was able to go from that point, at symbol said you're at this corner that you, I just gave you input on, go one foot or one inch to the left, one inch to the uh, Y direction, one inch to the west, one inch to the north, and bam, it made that. So I look back at my drawing, that box is three inches tall. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I can use my mirror command. Now I do not use a lot of 3D um, commands using the gizmos. I don't do that a lot. Um, I, I just, I haven't gotten familiar with it. I think it's a good tool and I probably ought to learn how to do it, but I just haven't gotten familiar with it. But the um, one that I use is normally the 2D version. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these midpoints. I'm gonna mirror it over to that side. Then I'm gonna mirror both of them to the other side because my drawing showed that it was symmetrical. So real easy, I was able to do that. Now to draw the box in between these two. So what I'm gonna do to draw that is I'm gonna go back to wireframe. Hit F7 if it helps you see better. I doubt it will. You can see these boxes go down into that base box because I drew them at the zero in the Z direction. So I drew them from the bottom all the way up. So now I want to go in and draw another box. The rectangular footprint, the rectangular shape, I've already got endpoints laid out for it. So by going to this 2D view, I can go in and specify those endpoints. So the only thing that I need to type in is how tall that middle part is. So I look back at my drawing, I see that it is 2.5 tall. I'm gonna go back to either realistic, which you can't really see that good. I'll go back to the shade of the gray. And you can see that I drew that box in the center right there. Once again, just like those other boxes, I'm gonna go into my mirror command, MI and spacebar. I'm going to mirror it to the other side. Now I need another box across the ends from end to end right here in the middle. So once again, I've got those points laid out. It needs to go from this corner of this box to that far corner of that box. And then I've got a height for it. So I go back into my box command with it being in 2D wireframe or wireframe. I can easily pick those hidden object snap points that I wouldn't normally be able to see because they're inside that object. Could I access them? Yes. The downside is it's hard to tell which one you're getting if you can't see it like this because that point would be hidden up inside that box. So now it says specify box height. I look back at my drawing. I type in two and enter. There it is in wireframe. There it is like that. So that's the main part of the box. All I've got left now is the holes. Remember, we don't draw holes. What we draw are cylinders or circles that we extrude or press pull, and then we subtract them from the others. So what I'm gonna do before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and union all this together. So when I cut these holes out, it'll make sure and get everything, go through everything. So I'm gonna just do a crossing window and select all those objects and hit enter. In the union command, you'll see that those little separation lines are gone. That is now all one solid object. The reason I waited till then was because you can see that I no longer have some of those endpoints I was using a while ago up inside there. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw some cylinders to make the holes that cut out of there. So I need to make sure I remember where uh, my grid is, where my right hand rule is. So I'm gonna go into my cylinder command. I look back at my drawing. What I'm doing is I'm drawing these two right out here. So when I look at my drawing, I see that from this front corner, so here's zero, zero. So if I go from zero, zero to the north, that front corner right there, if I go over 
in the x direction, the, I mean negative x, the west direction, an inch and a half from this side, that would get me to the center of the hole. If I go from here, five and a quarter, that will get me to the center of the hole. So what I can do is a little bit of translation and say, well, if this is zero comma zero, this point right here in the x direction, I'm going to the left, Here's, here's the rub on that, so I, let, me, no, let me go to this circle right here. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Let me go to that circle right there. All right, so this circle down here on the bottom, from zero, 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 if I go to the left inch and a half, so that's a, to the west, that is a negative X. So if I go an inch and a half, that'd be negative 1.5 for my X. And then here's zero, zero, if I go to the north, if I go in the Y direction, five and a quarter. Now I've now found the absolute coordinates for that center. I don't have to worry about the Z coordinate. AutoCAD can understand that that's zero if I don't give it one. So when AutoCAD says specify center point, I'm gonna type in my formula negative 1.5 comma 5.25 for my Y direction. And AutoCAD found that correct center. So that's why the X, Y, Z can help you. Sometimes there was other methods we could have done, but that was just looking at the drawing, say what dimensions did they give me? And utilizing those dimensions. And like I said, I'm a math person. My brain thinks math. So for me to do math, it's not a problem. Give me some math and I might have a good day. I can, I can do eight hours of math and have a good day. So for me, that's just the way my brain thinks. Maybe you're like that too. And you say, Mel, I want to go the hard way. I want to calculate some math. You can go other methods, but right there, using the information that's given on your drawing and using that same theory that we've learned all through school since the first time we learned about a point called zero, 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 and we learned that to the right was X, to the left was negative X. Up was Y, down was negative Y. Ever since then, it still applies. And that's exactly what I did to find that point. I just broke it down and said, all right, this is what's given on my drawing. How can I utilize that information? So now AutoCAD says, what's the radius? <clears throat> so when I look at my drawing and I see that half inch diameter, my brain says quarter inch radius. Because I know that any circular commands that I go into in AutoCAD, it's gonna say, what's the radius first? So when I look at that drawing, AutoCAD says specify radius, 0.25 and enter. And then because this is something that I'm gonna be subtracting out, I'm gonna make sure and drag it way outside that object. That will allow me to select it easier later on when it's time to erase that out of there. <clears throat> All right, so now I need another one of those on the other side so I can mirror that object. You can see it's a lot easier to select those objects inside other objects when you're in 2D wireframe. So there's my two cylinders right there. So I'm gonna turn over to this side and I'm gonna draw a cylinder on this side that I'm gonna cut out of it. So to do that, I'm gonna go to my view cube up here on the top right. I'm gonna click on the side of that view tube that lines me up with that view. And then I'm gonna come up here and pull this down and select the view command. That's gonna bring my right hand rule to me. So whenever I click this right here, you can see where Y and Z are down on the bottom left of my part that I'm drawing. So when I click this command right here, the view command, you will notice there's my grid, there's my X, there's my Y in the position that we usually draw on. That means that if I go to draw a circle or something, I'm actually drawing on this point. If I roll this around, you can see that zero, zero is still in that same corner. Zero, zero, zero actually. All it did was spun it around to the side that I was looking at. It did not move that. We can move zero, zero, but it didn't move it, it just spun it around. So now where I'm looking at it from this view, on my drawing, it says this hole on the side, from that left end in the Y direction, from here in the Y direction, I had a measurement of three and a quarter. And then up, I've got a measurement of one and three eighths. So I'm looking at that point in that position when I go into my cylinder command and it says specify center point, 
Well, when I spun it around, zero, zero is right there. In this view, I want to go to the right a distance of three and a quarter, and I want to go up a distance of one and three eighths. So I can use that as absolute coordinates. When AutoCAD says specify center, I can type in 3.25 comma 1.375 and enter. And because I had spun it around and moved my positioning on my X, Y, Z, now I could go back and use absolute coordinates again. And then once again, I'm going to be subtracting this out. This is one inch diameter, so 0.5 radius. And I'm going to pull it out the other side because I'm going to be subtracting it out. The next cylinders I'm going to draw to subtract are going to be from this side. So I'm going to click to get square on that side. The position that I want to look at it in. I'm going to click my view command. Go into my cylinder command. On my drawing, it shows it to be lined up from the midpoint up an inch, a half an inch. So from the left, from the zero, 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 I want to go that direction two inches up a half an inch. So now I brought my view to me. I brought my right hand rule to me. You can see that my X, Y is now in the correct position. Zero, zero is right there on that corner. So when AutoCAD says specify center point in the X direction, I want to go to the left. So I'm gonna tell AutoCAD negative two comma 0.5 and enter. AutoCAD found that center right there on the end. AutoCAD asked me for the radius. That one is, oops, caught slipping. That's a negative two comma 0.5, and then 0.25 for the radius. And then once again, I'm gonna drag it all the way out the other side so that I can subtract it. So I'm gonna go back to my shades of gray go into my subtract command. I'm going to select this to subtract from. AutoCAD says, what do you want to subtract? I want to subtract all of those cylinders. Here's a little trick or a little tip to remember. AutoCAD cannot subtract something from itself. It cannot subtract that shape from itself. So when AutoCAD said, what do you want to subtract from? And I selected this big shape right here. When AutoCAD says, what do you want to select? If I go through and select everything with the crossing window, AutoCAD is gonna filter out that big box because it can't subtract from itself. That would be the erase command. So I didn't have to manually go through there and individually select or try to spin it around so that I could get each one of these. I could just do a crossing window and select everything. And by default, AutoCAD is gonna take that big block out of its selection because it can't subtract it from itself. And it's only gonna subtract the cylinders. So that's one way to draw that shape. Another way that we could have drawn that is we could have done a series of boxes. I mean, in a, actually we could have done it a bunch of different ways. Um, you can draw a box on the bottom, box on top. Like So there's a bunch of different ways. But here's one that I did earlier when I was just practicing and playing. Let me go ahead. So remember, before you turn these in, Switch that back to WCS. So AutoCAD's XYZ, zero, 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 everything is in its natural AutoCAD position. But here's another way I drew, found out to draw it earlier. I was in there talking to Mr. Spooner this morning and we had a little 3D lesson. So I already created the setup for this next drawing. So when you first look at this, you say, okay, that's the top view. That's the top view of that um, block. <coughs> so that's what we're look, looks like we're looking at. Just like we normally would draw that in 2D, that would be the top view. Here's my top over here. Actually, it's rotated 90 degrees from where it should be. Let me make that change real quick. So that would be the top view with north oriented, correct? Everybody, everybody see what that is? Looking at this top view up here, but turned 90 degrees with north up, just like my view cube. Watch whenever I hold my shift key and roll this around though. What I did was I went on each side and 
and I drew the profile or this, that view looking at it from that position. So I've got the top view drawn down there on the bottom, then I rotate it up on this side, I brought the right hand wheel to me, I drew what it looks like from the end, and then I rotate it over to this side and I drew what it looked like from that right side. All right, so here's, and like I said, I did this earlier, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but it did. So I wanted to show y'all this method. So what I'm gonna do is, I, the main thing that I want to do, whenever we do the press pull, we can only press pull on our surface when we're looking down on it like that. That's the only areas that it will find the press pull, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I've got all these shapes drawn, all these lines just like what would look like the plan view. I'm gonna go into my press pull command. <clears throat> I'm gonna pick this one and I'm gonna press pull it up higher <coughs> than the other two profiles. I just want it to be taller than that. Remember also when you input a height in 3D, AutoCAD remembers that. So when I put the press, did the press pull on that and I picked a point up there, just a random point to make it taller than the rest. Now all I have to do is pick the next area, hit spacebar, enter to accept the default. Pick the next area, spacebar, next area, spacebar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all of these areas with the exception of those two circles right there. And I'm going to make them all the same height. So that looks like a real cluster. But you're going to see how it works out in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the union command and make all of those one object before I finish up with them. All of those three Ds is like one big block with two holes through it. I'm going to now switch to another 3D layer and turn that 3D layer off. So I didn't erase those objects, I just turned them off to where they're hidden. And now what I'm gonna do is come over here and look at one of these other sides, pick my view cube to get square on that side, pick my view command to bring my right hand rule to me. And then once again, I'm gonna go into my press pull command I'm going to pick inside that bounded area, hit spacebar to accept the default, and there's that block coming out that side with a hole in it. So I'm going to switch layers, also turn that layer off. So this is the side that I need to draw, this is the only one that I haven't drawn, so I'm going to come over here, go to my view cube, get square on it, rotate it to the position I want, bring my right hand rule to me. Go into my press pull command. Okay, it ain't long enough for this stretch. Once again, I want it to stick out past the other objects. So I go into my press pull command, I drag it out in that direction. So once again, I've got another 3D solid sticking out in that direction. Everybody still with me? Everybody awake? Most everybody? They're so sweet when they're asleep. Famous last word. I can't wait till they can walk. I can't wait till they can crawl. I can't wait till they can talk. All right. I'm going to switch that back to WCS. So see those three 3D three shapes. One here, one there, and one there. I'm going to go to the intersect command. AutoCAD says select objects. Remember the intersect keeps where 3D solids intersect each other. So by selecting all three of those solids, what AutoCAD is going to do is try to cut, mold, model, whatever term you want to use and find the intersection of all three of those 3D objects. Which turns out to be our finished product. So that was just a neat way that I figured out to do it earlier. And then once again, I'm gonna get rid of any 2D profiles that I have under there. And there's my 3D shape. Now, any questions about that? All right, I'm gonna go back to my master drawing. The other one that I'm going to do over there is the plastic spacer was what it was called. So I'm going to do my save as, go find my folder again. And 
Once again, multiple ways of drawing this one. This one is centered right there on zero, zero. One way that we can draw it is we can draw cylinders. AutoCAD says specify center of cylinder, zero, zero. This outside cylinder. So what I did over there on the board was I wrote it down, but I also wrote down some information about um, some of the points. Once again, some X, Y coordinates. I also wrote some diameters over there in radius format. So right now what I'm doing is drawing the small cylinder on the inside that sticks up a half an inch. Oh, also on those that I gave back, so let me go through and tell you all this. When I gave back that plastic spacer earlier, I had inadvertently handed y'all a bad copy. The one that I handed out for that project showed some lines that shouldn't have been on there. So over here in this view, the one that I handed out to y'all showed some lines going down on the side. Those shouldn't have been there. And I rung some of y'all up. And then I went through and counted points off because I'd rung something up. And then this morning when I came in, I happened to open this one up so I could get some, get some stuff ready for this drawing. And I said, oh crap, what I gave them was wrong. But don't worry, I went through and fixed it for next semester so they won't get any points counted off. All right, so on this one, no, I, did. I did. I went through and fixed it. I made sure because I knew I wouldn't forget. But I also went through and everybody that had turned one of those in, just in case you were one of them that I'd marked wrong on, everyone that had turned it in, I went and added three points to your grade. There was someone, so whatever shown on there, on the handout there, on the drawing that I gave back to you, in Blackboard, it should show three points higher. So just in case I rang it up, I didn't go through and investigate or say, okay, those of you that I already gave that back to and bring it here, see if I need that. I just went ahead, everybody that turned it in and added three points to your grade. So, uh, and there was somebody that already had maybe a hundred on it or something. So I put the points, I think they had a 99 on it. So I put the points to another, another um, assignment that you had in there. So I get, still gave you three points just between two projects. All right, so I'm drawing that smaller cylinder in there, which has a diameter of 3.5, a radius of 1.75 and enter, and it has a height of 0.5 inches. So there is that first cylinder. And then I've got another one that starts at zero, zero for the center that has a four inch diameter, so a two inch radius. That one is the big one on the outside that is one inch tall. And then we've got three smaller cylinders that we're gonna cut out for holes. I located one of those in XYZ format. It is at point, so when AutoCAD says specify center point, I'm gonna type in zero, comma, 1.125, but I don't have to hit the zero for the Z direction. I can just type in those two. The diameter on this one is half an inch, so 0.25 for the radius. And because this is going to be subtracted out, not going to be part of my finished product, I'm going to go ahead and put that up there taller. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Actually, what I did was I drew something incorrect. So let me switch this real quick. What I did was I drew that inside one right there <clears throat> down on the bottom. But to subtract it out, I need to move it up half an inch. So I'm just going to go in there and pick that one on the inside and move it up in the Z direction, 0.5, which is going to put it at the top of that cylinder. All right, so now I'm going to go through and do some subtracting. So I'm going to go into my subtract command. I'm going to subtract from this. And I'm going to subtract that smaller cylinder in there. So if I go back to one of my other views, just subtracted that out, hollowed it out, or bold it out. I'm gonna go back to my wireframe. I'm going to array this cylinder. AutoCAD says specify center point, zero comma zero, enter. I need three of them. So there's my three cylinders. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my other view. No problem with that. All right, so now I need to subtract those out. So once again, I'm gonna to go to my subtract command. There is my finished product. <clears throat> Another way that we could have drawn that, 
is I could go in the circle command. Normally I'd be picking zero comma zero comma zero right now. I could pick a point, so what I'm gonna do is use the 2D method. I'm gonna go in there and draw my outside circle, which has a radius of two. I'm gonna draw a concentric circle, radius of 1.75, and then I'm gonna draw a circle on the center, radius 0.25. I'm going to move that vertically up, vertically north to get it out there one and one eighth. And then I'm gonna do my array again, just like earlier. I'm gonna select this around this center point. So I would cut, I want three of them. So what I'm gonna do with this one is to press pull. I'm gonna tell AutoCAD to press pull this up 0.5 inches. I'm gonna tell AutoCAD to press pull this up one inch, hit enter and it's done. So once again, different methods of drawing the same things. Also remember after you get through, depending on which methods you use, to make sure and union those together. Not subtract. Yeah. Nathan? Oh, no, I was just holding oh. it for my bad. I thought you had a question. <laughs> Are you that or you still in the flag? I don't know which one. Let me see. All right, so any questions about what I did on either one of those on any of the methods? I said people see 3D differently. No, I'll go past the question. People see 3D differently, so it's how you see it and what you're comfortable with. What you got? So the, the hole in the center is there. The what now? Like is it there a hole in the center? Oh uh, yeah. Good catch, thank you. Okay. Zero zero zero. Point four three seven five for the radius. And then because I didn't put it on the other one also, I'm gonna go into the copy command. I'm gonna say in this center, copy it to the center of this. Subtract, remember, don't try to double subtract stuff. Don't try to say subtract from this and this and subtract this and this, because now those two objects are linked together when you do that. If you say M and spacebar for the move command, you try to move one, by subtracting multiple solids at the same time, you're also unioning them together. So be mindful of that when you're subtracting. Sometimes you don't want to union them together. So I'm gonna go into my subtract command. I'm gonna say from this, subtract this. From this, subtract this. Right, now you happy? Colton, we happy? Yes, sir. Thank you for catching that. Like I said, I might, I tell y'all real early, I do stupid stuff all the time. I've been told that many times. I've been married twice, that's the proof. <laughs> I didn't get enough of it the first time. I had to go back and go through it again. All right, those are your two assignments. So like I said, I've got some information up here on the board um, that you may want to get a picture of. Primarily the zero, zero, zero in the north direction. Now, that is something that is very critical because if it doesn't go into that virtual 3D world exactly where it should be, positioned exactly like it should be, you're gonna have a vessel over here and a vessel over here, but no pipe running between them. And then out in space, nothing supporting, nothing holding it up. They're gonna have a piece of pipe out there. So first, they're not gonna say, what is this pipe doing or why is it here? They're gonna say, who drew this? That's gonna be the first thing. And that answer is gonna be your company because it's not gonna be you that's in there when they say who drew this. It's gonna be the people you're doing the drawing for, Exxon Mobil, some refinery. It says, all right, all of you, because you're not gonna know the vessel people. You're not gonna know the electrical, the civil department, the program, the people that are doing that work. But the people that are hiring everybody and the general contractors will know them. And they're gonna call the civil people up, give me your 3D models. They're gonna call the structural, give me your 3D models, the electrical, the instrumentation, the piping, the vessels, the pumps. They're gonna get all that dumped in there. And they're gonna see that one pipe or that one piece of equipment out there where it's not supposed to be. 
It's not going to be why is it there because they don't want to know why it's there. It's not supposed to be there. There is no right answer to why is it there. All they want to know is who drew it because we might not want to use them. If for nothing else, we need to check everything that they do. And we don't want to hire somebody that we can't trust, that we have to back check everything that they've already checked. So little things like that seems like a small thing. It's just five points. Zero zeros in the correct location, five points. Turn 90 degrees, five points. Out an industry company loses a project, you lose a multi-million dollar customer over one drafter. Just in this classroom right, right now, you'll have 17 or so more that's waiting to sit in that chair. So think about things like that. It's not me being picky. It's not me, me being a uh, particular or angle about it. It's how it is in industry. You can draw it 100% correct and still be 100% wrong and get laid off over something like that. All right, so any questions on what you're working on? <laughs> Exploded? No.